running a theater, mm -hmm. running Necessary Angel, mm -hmm. running Tarragon. Yeah. You have a number. I just want to talk about the pieces of the puzzle that keep it going here at, at Tarragon. Right. So, uh, both those organizations are not for profit charitable foundations. That's always critical to remember. And not for profit is the critical thing to remember. They are engaged in the business of creating art, and then they're engaged in the business of producing and selling the art. Both of these things work in tandem, but they're not profitable. They're not about making money. They're about making art and making enough money to make art. And one of the keys is, is and this has happened to many theaters, is they run up deficits, though, and which prevent them in the making of art and the making of the decisions. And in a way, the deficit becomes the artistic director. It's a really simple thing to happen and then ends up making choices. You have to, as an artistic director, have some idea of d or definition of the work you want to do. And then you have to have some definition of who you want to speak to or who you want in your audience. So like I said, I, I, don't, I want as many people as possible, but I don't want everybody. I don't really want the, the people who are going to, mm, all the people that are going to, the, say, the musicals that are Mervish or Lion King. I want many of them. Yes, I want a, por a portion of them, but I don't want all of them because I know that they won't appreciate it and I'm not really speaking to them. So whatever I do, but there's people from that audience that I do want, and I want as many of them as possible if they want to be here. And I want to be able to be able to do the work I want to do without compromising that. So, so I, how do you make that work? Because it's so working you, here right. at Tarragon, yes. Yes, we're doing very well. We have uh, we, we we well one we don't run a deficit. You just don't run a deficit, or we we nearly have, but you basically just don't run a deficit because you don't want a deficit driving. The show. As soon as the deficit kicks in place, everybody panics, and used to. It used to be like very difficult. Theaters got, theaters in general, I think, have gotten better at not running deficits, not at running exorbitant expenses, and not having the revenue come in to match it. Uh, there's been a sense brought to it, and you have to operate some. But it is a principle like, just break even. And if you can do that with the work you want to do, uh, in the size of theater you ha happen to be in, great. I don't think I could do my work in an 800-seat house. Uh, here's a great example. You've seen Matthew, who's trying to do that Jocelyn came and stayed. He's trying to do a different kind of work than has been typically done there. He's done some of the typical work that has typically been done there, but he's also trying to do other things. So he doesn't bring it in for three weeks. He brings it in for a weekend. And he finds a tailored audience that will come and support that work, and he spends that much amount of money to support that kind of work. And having that sensibility, the producing sensibility, go, that's it. There's only going to be four people, four nights in the audience in Toronto mm -hmm. for that dance show or that. Uh, and if it works well and it generates a buzz, well, we'll bring it back because it's bringing it back with a kiss and cry coming back. Smart, sensible. But he's only did four nights to begin with or half a week. Right. And so he, he, in that way, he does the work he wants to do and doesn't run a deficit. And I think they were running deficits for a while. So, but they got, they've gotten out of it. So he's figured out the strategy. So uh, you want, theater is really uh, a not-for-profit corporation that has a board of directors who employed me and employs a general manager. And they're there to support you. They're there to raise money. They're there to um, sell the theater. And they're there to sell tickets. And they're there to make sure, and this is where the governance issue comes in, is to make sure that the choices you're making stay true to the mandate of the theater. Okay. Um, and the mandate's not the deficit. The mandate's the artistic mandate. The mandate is what, what you're doing and what you want to do and how you want to do it. And the mission statement is how you want to do it. But the mandate is what you're going to pursue. So we have a mandate here. It's to create and develop new Canadian, produce new Canadian plays and to provide the conditions for the, the best conditions for new Canadian work to be um, generated, plus uh, uh, to complement that work, bringing plays from away, classical plays, whatever, to complement that work, to give a context for that work, both for art artists and audience, and to have training uh, to support the, uh, 
the, the techniques and the issues of doing new Canadian plays. When does the board exert power? The board exerts power uh, when they approve your season. So they see your season, and they look at the season, and they go, uh, uh, not so much that they look at the season, they just make sure that the season isn't going to cause a deficit in the first get-go. Get so that's when, if the season's causing a deficit, Actually, wait a minute, because they're looking at, well, well that's a risky play, no people look out, or they're saying, wait a minute, what's no, your production no, budget? What's your, production what, budget, what's your audience projections? Uh, okay. they, they don't have the savvy to know that that's, that's a risky play. So they're, they're not looking at your choice of plays, they're no. looking at your budgeting yeah, over right. those and plays. And you have this many actors, and, uh, and they might go, if you had something that seemed extraordinary, you're going from a six-week run to a 24-week run, someone might say, well, how can you... Is there an audience for that work? You know, that's a pretty, right. and that's what you want in many ways for your audience, your board, to be your first audience. You want them to be, to see the playbill, and go, oh, that's kind of, I'm, I'm intrigued by that, because you want them to raise money, you want them to sell the theater, you want them to sell tickets, you want them to contribute to benefits, you want them to be engaged in it, so they should have some interest in the, it. Uh, and, and that's what I mean by a first audience. You want the people, they had to, to be the first people to walk in the door right. to, to see a play. So we invite board members to readings to just get their impression. Like, and maybe they'll be a sponsor, become the sponsor of that show or right. not. They'll be intrigued by it. They'll be, you want them engaged. They're on audience. They're, they're here to be an audience, not here to be board members. And they're here to support the theater. So, and is your responsibility the theater just year to year to year to year, or is your responsibility looking at five years and seven years and Oh, um, well, I, you're, you're trying to, it's a, it's a How does Richard double think long term at the Tarragon? I think I'm about saying. plays that are percolating right now um, in first draft form that may potentially be productions in two or three years. Or ideas that playwrights are talking about that might turn into plays in a couple of years. Uh, I think, um, so that's where some long term thinking, because we rely on new plays, uh, and I've started, but I did not also have begun a, and to think about plays that I want to do that are not necessarily new plays. Mm, Enemy of the People, uh, Much Ado About Nothing. I'm thinking about Hamlet. I'm thinking about uh, uh, Tempest. Uh, I want to do some Shakespeare because I think it's important to do some Shakespeare. Yeah, and to to do some Shakespeare in a big kind of context because of the, the challenge of the writing and what the writing brings. And he's still, in many ways, an innovative playwright. There's lots of innovation to his work, it's, um, uh, even though it doesn't appear so, but he's 500 years old. But I think there is innovation moment to moment to moment. He's still making us think. And, uh, and in terms of running, so you talked about mm -hmm. running the programming, mm -hmm. the board, right. the deficits, th the board being your first audience. Right. What and about the fabric of the building you work and the position of the building, mm -hmm. the Tarragon building in the city of Toronto, in the country of Canada? I mean, that's also how does yeah. Richard want the tarragon to be in one year, five years, ten years, or whatever? Uh, one of the really long, uh, it's a, a long-term goal. And I, I'll tell you one of the things that I have been, it's been about a six-year goal, and I think I finally achieved it um, this season, this coming season. And then I've just pulled back, so I, don't, I haven't achieved it, but I know I can do it now, is I wanted the ability to hire at least 50 actors every year. Because, and I know it seems very arbitrary, but it actually gives, says, playwrights, you can write almost any play you want. I can do a Shakespeare. I can do your 10-person play. I can do your 15-person play. I can't do your 15-person play on that space because it's not big enough. That space handles about 12, 13. That's about it. Um, an actor needs um, that much room to act in, <laughs> in a kind of circle. And so you put 13 actors, and then they're all bumping into each other. <laughs> or they're just barely touching hands. Mm -hmm. So... You need, um, uh, 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 so I, just to achieve that goal, so we have the ability to do almost any kind of play we want to do now. Uh, we can't do, you know, six Shakespeare's, uh, but we can get up there uh, in a combination of plays, uh, and people aren't writing those kind of plays because they want to get produced on the theaters, but if a playwright so chooses, we're there and able to do it, and we're there and able to provide a development process for any size of play. Uh, to work over a period of time to develop it up and give them an extensive workshop if needs be or uh, kind of create the best conditions possible. We're in pretty good shape to be able to do that. Um, now, the National Arts no. Centre just got 
uh, a very large announcement of a grant to actually help redo the NAC building to actually bring it Up into a more accessible, modern, and yeah. actually yeah. Uh, doable building. Yeah. Yeah. In terms of Tarragon and ambitions, and in terms of do you have that kind of ambition? Yes. Like so one of the other long plans, and five five year plan, or if it's been a many year plan, is to improve the working conditions of the building, uh, the production abilities. Uh, we can't do a fly house, for example, because we're in a neighborhood. We li we're in a residential neighborhood, and there's a, the people living just north of the building. They don't want a big, tall tower structure built in this building. We might be able to do it over this, the, the southern end of the building, uh, uh, but we want the ability to have some kind of near flying conditions, I think. We want to improve. Uh, at the moment, we have plans to improve half the building in terms of upgrading it to the new building code and building a new main space on the north side of the building uh, with a higher ceiling uh, that uh, would take us from street level to the top of the building. Again, we're limited because there's people who live on the north side and they don't want their sunlight cut off, which is reasonable being in the neighborhood. You know, we're, we just, right. you know, you want to be in a neighborhood. Buy them out. Right. Well, you'd have to buy a number of houses. <laughs> 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 Does that mean you have yeah. to change the kind of board you have to get that kind of infrastructure fundraising board? or? Uh, yeah, or develop an advisory board that could support that. I mean, I don't think it has to be. I don't think you want, the, the, what is key, and, and one of the approaches we're trying to take, actually, is rather than go for the $30 million reno, uh, is to take an incremental approach. And in fact, we've begun little renovations on the southern side of the building, which will not change, because to change the southern side and the northern side, it's going to take $30 million, and there isn't enough government money or whatever, or maybe there is enough government if you, the, after the National Arts Center uh, to, um, to, uh, to do, it would take so much effort that it would take us off what we're doing, which is create, develop, a new c and produce new Canadian plays. All our efforts would go into fundraising and to do the work we do as a d producer and creator and developer new creator, creator place is a really a lot more work than just doing classical plays. Right. Just choosing a season, rehearsing or putting up of classical plays or contemporary plays. New work amplifies the work we have to do. It's very time consuming. Reading draft after draft is laborious. So I, I don't want to be burdened by that. But I do want to improve the facility. I don't want my focus taken off what I'm supposed to be doing, which is being in a rehearsal hall and be working with writers. So my, see, my but question is, yeah. how much is artistic leadership in this country about maintaining and creating the art, and how much is it about building, I don't mean the infrastructure, but building Canadian culture? I mean, how much, and is it a bigger building? Is it, you know, is it tough? Is I, it going I think know, Canadian culture is not the building. I think Canadian culture is the place. And, and how much do you need a shows. better facility or a more ambitious facility to do better uh, work? I, I, and how much do you say, no, no, it's fine? Uh, there will always well, be mice it, in the it corner. Really of will, okay, so the, yes, there will always be mice in the corner, but at the same time, there will not be a deficit that will stop me from doing the work I want to do. And we have seen many buildings. I mean, the NAC seems to be getting an outright grant, for example, I think, to do this, right? So lucky them. Uh, I don't think we'll ever get an outright grant to do that because of the nature of work we do. We do difficult work. We do do classical work. We do difficult work. But what about TNM? I mean, what about I mean, large amount of infrastructure. You know, that's money a different came political I know scenario. Okay, it's it's, 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 it's quite different. Where did the money come from? It's just a very yeah. different structure. I don't think there's thirty million dollars to renovate the Terragon. We have a plan. We've looked at it and went that will cripple us, right? Because we won't reach the we won't we won't have we won't reach that fundraising goal right. in City of Toronto with the massive provincial deficit with a uh, you know, conservative mayor now or whatever it's you know the, the circumstances keep changing so mm -hmm. but we're not going to get 30 million bucks from all levels of government to be able to do that and put in the fundraising which is another 15 you know if you get 15 from the government it's 15 from fundraising well we're exhausted at that point and because in know, the background and we don't have that big enough an audience we're not the ballet which has a thousand people mm -hmm. each night we have 208 people 